Good morning, good morning, good morning, and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. In fact, it is the very first episode of the new year, so happy new year to everyone who's tuning in to watch the show live, and a happy new year to anyone who's watching us in the archives. We definitely appreciate your support. But this new year, I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do, and that is to go out and be an evangelist for the Roundtable Talk Show. We need your support, so please share the show. Our guests are here this morning to let you know about who they are and what they're passionate about, and we want you to share it with your network. So while you're sharing the show, I'm going to introduce a dear friend of mine. I love this beautiful lady. She's a world changer. She's always out there helping people. I'm always so, so proud of her, proud of her and everything that she does. I want to go ahead and introduce my friend, Miss Dana Nickerson. Dana is a heart-centered thought leader, respiratory therapist, speaker, millennial mom, and coach. She teaches young professionals how self-love, self-awareness, integrity, and play make the winning formula for overcoming challenges, developing rock-solid relationships, and living the best life of their dreams. Good morning, Dana. How are you? Good morning. I was listening. I'm like, who's that girl? I was trying to get to know her a little bit. Good morning, well, everyone. Well, it's so good that. to see you. That's you. You know, I love every time I see you. You are so supportive. I, I mean, I just l you love your energy. You're amazing. Well, thank you, Sharifa. I, I tell you, I tell everyone how we met and how glad I am that we met and that we continued our, our entrepreneurial efforts. And it's really become a uh, bond that I have with you. I always look forward to what you're doing. It's almost an unspoken thing. We can speak um, often or we can speak not so often and pick right back up because we're both about making changes and doing what's best for people around us and our community is number one. And I love that I, I met you and you have that heart. It makes it really easy. But thanks for having me today. I'm so excited to be here for the first episode of the new year. This is amazing. It's amazing to have you here. So what have you been up to since we last spoke? Wow, since we last spoke, I <clears throat> sat with my, my um, entrepreneurial um, chutzpah, I guess I say, and you know, I just finished business school in April. I graduated from University of Redlands School of Business. Congratulations. And thank you. And with my career in healthcare, I kind of was caught in, in um, somewhat of a whirlwind with the rest of the world except for I have skills to help with the situation around COVID. It's us respiratory therapists who are the frontline workers, who the nurses, we support each other to keep people alive right now. And so I looked at what's before me and what I want for my life. And I realized that I had so created a corporate channel for living that didn't suit my creative side. And so what I figured out about myself over this last summer since we've spoken is that I'm good when I have several things to do and not multitasking, because that's a non thing. You don't get very far with that. But I would do really well when I have several things to do, like motherhood. I had three girls and my job. So everyone had something to do. And looking at that, that trifecta effect in my life that I can handle many things, and that must be what I like to do, I chose to create streams of income, multiple, in order to suit my desires in life and to, to get out my passions and do what I'm good at and give my gifts. And so since I saw you, I began real estate school and I should be finishing that soon. I created um, a COVID officer program using my respiratory therapist skills and partnering with a registered nurse, my friend Leslie, we created COVID safety on set. And our passion and our goal is to make safety possible for creatives on film, TV, and commercial sets. And it's such a natural flow because I've done acting and that's one of my passions as well. I studied drama and theater for several years during my childhood. And so when I saw this year is really, I didn't, I didn't fall in with the others. I didn't kick against COVID and hydroquinine and politics. I didn't, I got a hold of me and I got to know myself and who I could be in this arena. And as it is, 
when life shows itself the most challenging, that's when you stand up. And so it was a natural thing that, hey, what do we do? What do we, and all of these ideas just started to flow. We're gonna find solutions for minority home buyers because it's time. We're gonna help, you know, um, I don't like to say help because no one needs help, but I'm, I wanna support the film industry who we just had the benefit being here in Hollywood, you know, that's our mainstay in California. That's our staple, that's our economy. And it was very disheartening to see so many friends and producers and actresses and um, filmmakers and film writers be out of work and watch our economy crumble. So once again, putting minds together with other great minds, let's find solutions and we're doing that. And my number one passion, which we spoke about last time is BU University. And I have it that I'm the auntie to the millennials and Generation Z. I have it that I've been sick enough, I've been poor enough, I've been rich enough to help someone who's blessed, I've been emotionally disturbed enough to help someone who wants to commit suicide or harm themselves. And what I'm gonna do is put my neck out there and all of my experiences and I'm going after the toughest group of individuals in the world, and that's the millennials and Generation Z, because I wanna help prevent suicide and depression. And I want to be a support to raise strong leadership and integrity in young people, because that group is the group that did without mothering. They had to figure things out themselves at home. They were the children of crack cocaine and heavy drugs. And we can give them the skills that match with that rock hard exterior and they can take what they want to do and fly if they know how to do it and that's what i'm up to i want to empower the young future leaders of the world and i got a, I got a little start on that going so that's my that's my passion wow now whoever's tuning in you can see why i love dana so much her three different things she's doing to help people you are amazing you are a blessing now one question for you i have actually many questions but i just want to ask in everything that you're doing how do you practice self-care wonderful question because that is how i started with that's how how b university got started I found out that as a healthcare worker, I was doing everything I wanted to do to gain success and carry the right handbag and drive the right car. But all of the stress and all of the, the life challenges were bombarding me and they affected my health such that I got breast cancer twice. Mm. And so my very first coaching program, and I am a coach, I'm just focused on some things right now. And I do take coaching clients. I have two now. My very first program was around preventing burnout for the healthcare worker. And so I'm a product and I'm a customer of my own program. And what I do is I create my mornings. If I have to get up early or if I have to sit in my car before I go to work or whatever I have to do, I have quiet time for meditation. I, I practice my spiritual practice and I do breath work. And I quiet my mind and I listen to um, music that helps me move my body in just the freest way and loosen up my hips. And for you, for us women, we hold shame in our hips and doubt in our shoulders. So just to move and to be free and to really feel your feminine and womanly essence before you start the day sets you up for an awesome day. And then I set my intentions, whether I write them or not every day, I like to write them so I can go back. But if I write them or not, I put them here or I text them to a friend for accountability. That's mm -hmm. how I practice self-care. I have to get on that accountability list. Yes, yours. right. So I can That'll be more work. accountable for my own self-care as well. Yes, it makes a difference. And it, and it makes a difference in how you relate to other people because you get you out of your way. And when, you're, when, you, when you face your day and you meet individuals, you can bring nothing not all of this head clatter and what you think they meant. And it's really pretty amazing how if we can just move us out of the way, and quiet our minds, we disappear a lot of self-talk just by doing that. And then your, your, your day is just wide open. I think that is definitely beautiful. I'm gonna come back to you, Dana. I wanna go- Thanks. 
<laughs> and introduce our next guest. And you will love this beautiful young lady as well. This is her second time appearing on the Roundtable Talk Show. The first time she was here, we were so excited. She created a beautiful video. And I was just so amazed. I put it out on social media. Today, she's going to talk to us a little bit more about what she has been up to, Miss Zofia Banyai. Sophia of My Processes helps busy entrepreneurs to automate and outsource their time-consuming tasks without sacrificing their profit. If you are looking to make the four-hour work week a reality or simply avoid burnout, then she has a lot to tell you. Good morning, Sophia. How are you? Thanks for the introduction, Sharif. I'm so happy to be back in your show. I'm doing great. So happy to be on the 2021 first show it's such a great start of the new year i believe thank you yes and you are glowing you are just absolutely glowing <laughs> maybe the lights you know the softboxes <laughs> and everything <laughs> or maybe that's a good start for the new year i, th- I might go with it's a good start for the new year All right. so tell us a little bit about my processes who are you sophia Oh, you did a very great introduction. Thank you. So yes, I help busy entrepreneurs with automation and outsourcing. And I love Dana mentioned burnout. So that's also something I'd like to prevent people from and especially for entrepreneurs. Let's be honest, we are actually on the edge of the burnout because we want to do whatever we can. Hey, I can handle this. I can handle that. We have this superpower, but we have our limit as well. And uh, we should not overuse the energy and our resources, our body, our relationships for the sake of our business. We really have to be cautious and have ability to spare time for ourselves. And sometimes the answer is uh, very easy. Just let a few tasks to go. And sometimes it's more complicated. You have to think about automation. You have to think about having a new employee to help you with or use the opportunity without of outsourcing to get rid of certain tasks which you which you just shouldn't do and spare time and energy for yourself so that's what i am up to that's how i try to help entrepreneurs with my advices and also with setting up the process of outsourcing so if anyone is afraid of outsourcing and worried about the risk of outsourcing then that's why i where i step in because I don't just have a broad network of freelancers to whom you can outsource, but actually I set up the whole process from the beginning to the end and take care of it so you can have a peace of mind of letting things go. And what I was up to recently, I've created an online course about how to make the outsourcing decisions. So how to find, how to find out that you actually need outsourcing, how to find the tasks that you can outsource, and more importantly, how to manage the risk which is associated to outsourcing and which most people are scared of. Yes. Wow. What are some tasks that you can outsource? Because I want to outsource everything, by the way. That's just (laughs) me. But the best thing is that if you have a cash generating task, which you can automate and then you have a cash machine and you just go away. I haven't found it yet, but (laughs) next time I find it, I will pop in the call and let you know. (laughs) Thank you. I need that. (laughs) You can outsource millions of things, of course. It depends on your business, what you are doing, what you find uh, mundane and what you don't enjoy and whatsoever. Uh, Usually my number one advice, if you start a business, that outsource your bookkeeping and taxation. So unless you are a finance professional, that's too hard to do. Too time-consuming, probably you don't have the most up-to-date information you need to have. Chances are you don't like it. Uh, Let's say most of us don't like it. Uh, and you will keep procrastinating and doing not a good quality of job, which will really harm your business because finance is completely the core point of the business because the goal is to generate revenue. And unless your finances are in the right shape, your business might uh, suffer and struggle. So accounting and taxation, something you should really consider to get help with. But from that, there are plenty of things from social media management, content writing, videos, YouTube, whatsoever. So all which is about content then you can go with administrative things uh the mundane tasks of researching researching podcast opportunities for example if it is something that is so important to you and these outsourcing tasks can be uh long-run tasks or project-based uh tasks and it's all fine there are a lot lot of ways actually if you want to have a full list i have collected like 100 plus tasks that you can outsource and it's on my website you can just download it free and and have a look if there is something that uh, resonates to you 
Now, let me just ask you this, because I admittedly am a type A personality with perfectionist issues who's also OCD. So how do I ensure that the work that I outsource is going to get done to my standards? Excellent question. And that's when I usually come into the picture because these are the kind of fears people do have when outsourcing. It's very easy to go to Upwork and hire a freelancer, but then you have these kind of questions. You just ask that, how can you ensure the quality? There are a bunch of good tools. I talk about this in the online course as well. What I'd like to highlight to you is to have a good contract which is in one hand can be a non-disclosure agreement, which safeguards you and your business. On the other hand, have a good statement of work, which writes down that what are the expectations, what will the service exactly include. Uh, I prepared a template for this, and I'm really happy to give it to you and your listeners as well. It can be used for you when you outsource something, but also you can use it if you are doing a job. So whenever side of the equation you are, uh, you can go through all the points, which are from communication. So what will be the communication channels? How often will you communicate? What are the information the client needs to share? What are the information the freelancer will share? Uh, how long does it take? What are the payment conditions? So like all these things I cannot really list right now. These are all important and these are there. It's a combo template. So you can just very quickly uh, update it to your needs and, and use it. And that's a very, very good safeguard. The other safeguard is having a good training. And if you have OCD, I'm sure you can do a great training with all the details. So no question, you can go ahead with that. <laughs> yes, I'm very detail oriented. Now I'm gonna come back to you. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce my next guest, Miss Jessica Fermanek. Jessica is a writer, public speaker, and actor who has been a dedicated advocate for the support and recovery of women who have been exploited in the commercial sex trade. She is a member of the Speakers Bureau for Treasures Ministry, as well as Nola Brantley Speaks, which are survivor-led organizations designed to bring awareness, resources, and empowerment to victims of human trafficking and exploitation. Good morning, Jessica. How are you? I'm well. I'm loving this. I'm so impressed <laughs> right now by these two. I want Dana to be my mentor, and I want Sophia to take over my business management. Oh, okay, I'm done. <laughs> the same thing. I thought the same thing. Fantastic. Jessica, tell us a little bit about yourself. I, I was moved by your bio, by the fact that you're actually going out there to help and support women. Why are you so passionate about this issue? I'm so excited that you asked me that because it's like everything I always want to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. So everything that they're talking about, um, is relevant to my business life as well. You know, I've worked in, I, I did my first live performance on the radio at the age of four. So I was oh, wow. in the entertainment industry my whole life. But as I matured, um, it what happened was that I experienced um, harassment, uh, assault, um, exploitation uh, as I matured throughout and was still working in the, the entertainment industry as a model and an actor and a singer and a dancer. And so I experienced compounded trauma. I developed complex PTSD. Meanwhile, I'm trying to run my businesses as an entrepreneur. So it's really hard to do that when you can't sleep at all, when you have flashbacks. And so I began um, a long journey of recovery. I did every program everybody offered me and sort of took a little from everything and realized that certain things work better for me than others. Um, and then at the end of it, I realized that even after taking all these recovery programs that I actually had completely forgotten what I was here for and what my purpose was. I had stepped away from my career. I was just totally lost. So I felt better emotionally and spiritually, but couldn't, didn't know what to do for business anymore. So I took a year, I call it my Esther year. Because um, I studied the book of Esther over and over. So if you don't know about the book of Esther, take a quick read to it. It's not a long read, but it, it's a really powerful story about a woman who went from losing it all to the queen of the land. Um, and that meant something to me. And so I journaled every month for one year. And at the end of it, I realized I had a book with really clear action steps on how to go from pain to purpose. Thus, the book. <laughs> so... 
now, not only do I run my businesses and take care of myself and do all my self care, but I dedicate pretty much all my free time to advocating for survivors of exploitation. And I do talk a lot about trauma recovery too, as it pertains to everyone, but my wheelhouse uh, for about the last decade has been uh, trafficking survivors and exploitation survivors. Um, I just feel like uh, it's fantastic for us as a community to offer recovery uh, to people ha who have been treated poorly, right? And that's wonderful, but then what? right? So I want them to remember what they came here for, what their purpose was before all these people crushed them, and to come back to that and to be even more fantastic and powerful than they would have been before the trauma happened and before all the loss. So that's, that's pretty much what I'm dedicated to. Does that make that sense? Was, it makes perfect sense. And I'm blown away. This is a powerful show, first show yes. of the new year. And if you are just now tuning in, please go ahead and share the show because we have some amazing ladies here today. When you were speaking, Jessica, I heard the emotion in your voice. I heard you trying to control the emotions that you're feeling and, it, and it's coming through. And I'm like, wow, you're stepping past all of that just to be your authentic self and to share and to help not only for yourself, but for other people. And I believe that's powerful. I, I want to mm -hmm. talk about the exploitation and everything. And I'll get to that. But I want to go back to something that you said with the PTSD. So often, especially in America, we tend to believe that only veterans suffer from PTSD. I personally believe that all of us in some form or fashion is or operate in some form of PTSD because as a society, we're not allowed to grieve. We're not allowed to stop. We're not allowed to get over these actions that have happened to us our society is like get up go on you know go on with your life and we don't deal with it how did you first come to for a the realization that it was ptsd and what were the steps that you took to to get through it first i want to agree and confirm what you're saying so it's been uh studies that the studies that i've read um say that about a third of the u.s population has uh, experience trauma. I think that's low. I really think all of us have experienced trauma and loss. Um, and so um, the survivors, just, just to, to, to get you on track with how tough it is for, for trafficking survivors, it, it, it is said, it, the studies show that they experience PTSD at the same or similar level as a combat soldier. So I think that our community is really, has done a, a pretty good job of supporting the returning soldier. So when returns, we offer them the counsel that they need. We acknowledge that they are going to be trauma survivors and maybe have PTSD, right? So what I want people to start to maybe consider is that first of all, trafficking survivors are coming out with that same level of uh, trauma experience and still having to navigate that. And then the rest of us are also experiencing trauma and loss too. And so the way that I discovered it was I kept doing recovery programs and then occasionally somebody would describe PTSD and the symptoms. And I had all these things that I struggled with. Like I could never sleep all the way through a night. And then I would be, someone would be talking to me or I would smell something or hear sound and I would immediately be back in a abuse scenario. And then I couldn't hear them speak to me. And then they, they thought I was like crazy, which was fair <laughs> because I'm not responding to the conversation. Um, and sometimes I would have to leave because I, I, I would be in this, I was in it one, at one point, I had a two day long episode. So I couldn't leave the room for two days. So I realized, okay, probably I have PTSD. <laughs> Right. because these are all the things that they describe. And so once I realized that, I went in a new direction for my therapy. And I personally have found that physical movement is for me the most effective. So I did a lot of talk therapy. I don't um, push back against it. Like, so I have no bad words to say about it. Like I don't, I'm not gonna discourage y'all to do that. However, I found that Move me, moving therapies worked about 80 times faster for me, right? So if I went to one uh, session of equine therapy at the farm, right, and worked with a horse for two hours, it was like six months of talk therapy for me. So it cracks everything open. 
So now I do fight training once a week. I do um, equine therapy. I run a hundred miles a month. So my body, which is where all the trauma is located, even if you talk it through and your mind forgets it or you move on or you're calm emotionally, your body will have something to say until it's done talking about the trauma. And that can look like uh, cancer, like I had blood cancer at the age of 30. That's weird. Um, it, it can look like I had, a, I had a minor heart attack at the age of 28. That's not right. So these are all the trauma saying, here I am and you will talk to me. <laughs> so I discovered along the way uh, that all the movement therapies were the win for me. So I do encourage it. I'm, everybody has a different uh, process that works best for them. So I don't ever discourage one or the other. But for me, that's the win. Mm. Dana, I see you over there. You're, you're yeah, shaking. Thank you. <laughs> you know, what are your thoughts on what Dana had to mm. tell, what Jessica had to say? Jessica, you're amazing. And thank you for making yourself transparent. I, I What I'm sitting here listening to you is um, PTSD is why I started coaching. And um, I had a very, very vivid spiritual awakening at two, in 2014. And around that, and out of that, in my training and all, I became a coach and I'm still in, in leadership training with a global organization to become a global leader that I can teach people about listening to what they think. And what I'm listening to, first of all, is your bravery in that, because it's taken me several years to be very candid and frank about what's happened. And now I'm a wide open book. I have it that that's my job, kind of like you're saying. We don't go through things like this for, for no reason. And, and then I also hear that um, it's just, to, I think to sit with someone who is explaining something that I didn't know how to explain once, once upon a time. You know, once again, I'm going back to millennials and Gen Z who, who are soon to be the highest groups of suicide and depression. And I'm hearing me in you, hoping that they hear themselves when I speak. And I just see that if we continue to do our work, that collective voice will gain power. And I'm really, I'm really um, excited about what you're doing and hope to, hope to maybe work with you soon, at least talk to you. I hope to work with you too. And I wanna jump in on one thing that Dana referred to, my candidness. So I was uh, offered the opportunity to speak years before I ever agreed to share my story or, 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 or speak candidly in any way. So I kept yeah. all the secrets. Um, and I, I, I tell my survivors that I talk to, I actually discourage becoming um, a speaker or an open book. It, is, it has to be something that you, you take your sweet time getting to. Yeah. Your recovery first, take five years. And then if you wanna be a speaker, go on. But your recovery first, don't worry about speaking. And then if at the end of that, you still wanna be an open book, um, and on a public forum, and you do feel like it's the right way for you to process and do it. Um, but, but it's not for everyone. It's, it's most, most survivors will not be like me and Dana and you guys, they will not be sharing. Um, and so I don't, I don't, I never want any, anyone watching who is a survivor of trauma or exploitation or trafficking to feel like they have to become a speaker. It's cool. You never have to become a speaker. You just I would just want you to get your own processes and therapy and trauma recovery, uh, whatever that looks like. Does that make sense? Yes, perfect yeah. sense. And I love you said that. You know that the what I'm think what I'm present to is how messy the the recovery. If you want to say recovery, what it is, we just adapt because that yeah. never goes away. And the person we became out of the trauma is is still present. We just learn to catch ourselves in when we get into the negative context and out of integrity with what we want for our lives. And I think for several people being in integrity for them means I don't share this, but with people who I feel safe with. And that's what it's all about is how you feel safe. Yeah, I've never shared all of all my stories. No. It's never gonna happen. But yeah. the whole point for me of this discussion of trauma recovery, da 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 da, and, and, and the whole point actually of this book, if you get all the way from the beginning to the end, is as an entrepreneur, as a business person, as anyone walking in their purpose and calling in work, in career, um, in order to be able to succeed as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, this has to happen first. It, it can pull you away from your work. You'll be at work, you don't understand what's going on, you feel lost, you can't focus, you can't have a discussion. Yes. 
feel anxiety, whatever that turns out to be, can't sleep every night. It's going to be real hard to work with all that going on. And so for me, the purpose of writing this was go ahead and do all of these things in this book addresses, mind, body, training, eating, um, praying, you know, whatever that looks like for you. So if you, if you can do all these things, you're going to be able to be the best entrepreneur that you can be. So really that's the end, that's the, the end chapter of the book is get, getting you through all of these things so we can talk about your business. So, mm, I think that's powerful. I think that's very powerful. At the end of the day, it has to serve them. It has to, mm -hmm. you know, I have a dear friend. She's always on my other show, Face to Face Talk Show Wednesdays at 10. She's a therapist and we always talk about that. She, being a therapist, she talks about how too often we focus on the long term when the people who come to see her are focusing on how, you know, their immediate survival. You know, mm -hmm. so you have to go through all of that, but people are trying to figure out how to eat, how to feed their families, how to live their lives in the midst of all the trauma. So I think that was definitely an excellent point. And again, we have so many people tuning in. I want to say thank you to Charlotte Henio. I pronounce her name all always wrong. Jade Elizabeth Francis Pullen. We have Annie Seamus and James. So many people tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. We're at the half hour mark. So if you just tuned in, please go ahead and share the show. The ladies today are describing and sharing their incredible stories and we do not want your network to miss out on it. I want to go over to you, Sophia. We're listening to Dana. We're listening to Jessica. They're being so authentic and so vulnerable in sharing their stories, but they're both entrepreneurs and they need your help. When, when you're listening to them, what are your thoughts? Well, thank you so much for uh, for sharing these stories and I can, I can really, really relate what you are saying and it makes so much sense how you described I was just thinking about that you mentioned Jessica that it's a trauma everybody is traumatized in one way and another and I fully agree just think about this current situation that's a massive trauma we are going through I remember being a very open person a year ago and being able to hug anyone in the street if it was like the situation and I wouldn't give a second thought about that and now where is it gone sometimes I am you know just worry about passing by another person if he doesn't wear a mask or not properly and that's a massive trauma we all will have to cope somehow in the upcoming years and not to talk about the historical traumas all of us have went through. I know, guys, you are from the U.S., but uh, I'm from Europe and we had some communist background here in Eastern Europe, which makes me very anxious about the government. Uh, there are very, very uh, serious trust, trust issues towards the authorities in this part of the world, which is, I know, not there necessarily in the Western part of the world, but it's really a thing here. And also there is the trauma. And as an entrepreneur, it's quite hard to overcome because we all want to do things fairly and um, be in a good level, good connection with the authorities, but still having these mindset issues of not trusting them at all. It's very hard to cope with. Um, so addressing like all kinds of different uh, PTSD or, or traumatizing issues, I think it's very important because you can only be a good entrepreneur or a good career if you, if you are a healthy person. And, and I think that that's really a key. So thank you, Jessica and Dana, for your work. I think it's super important. Well, you know, I was, I was hoping to get back to, to you and where, <clears throat> pardon me, I just had a conversation with my business partner last night about our executive function skills. She and I both, as a result of childhood trauma and PTSD, um, have um, attention deficit disorder. And so many of the things that you were speaking to about outsourcing for me have been the reason I'm not, you know, farther along and not that anything's wrong. I'm not making anything wrong. Everything is as it should be. I just see that I have grappled with things that I can't, I can't manage trying to get the job done when outsourcing would be the thing to do. And that is part of the reason for one of my part-time jobs is so that I can afford to pay people to do stuff I, I don't know how to do and I'll go do what I, I know how to do to make the money to pay them. And um, I think what you're doing is so important to people with limited exact or you know like I call it neurodiversity. My friend and I, um, we think differently. Therefore we're brilliant in other ways that people like you and people who, the out, who we would outsource um, give it to them because they enjoy it. And just like Sharifa, I too am a type A personality I love, um, you know, I'm all about 
excellence. And it's not just that perfectionist side of me that ags me is the ADD it within inside, inside the perfectionist. And at the end of the day, wanting to turn out a product that's worthy of my client, not worthy of what I know how to do. And that will cause me a two day setback. If I sit here doing things that I'm not good at, then tomorrow and the next day, I may feel the, the failure and make wrong around not being able to. So what you're doing is so powerful. And I just had an hour long conversation with my partner about who, what are we gonna put in? What kind of services are we gonna um, outsource? So yeah. get that you have a place with the traumatic, the trauma, traumatized mind. What you're doing is very powerful and it, it's empowering to us if we can let go of the jobs though. That's part of the thing. <laughs> I will certainly remember that. Thank you for mentioning this aspect. Yeah. Um, well, so you will feel better if you are doing a task that you actually enjoy and just let others do what they do the best. And that's also a good thing for your uh, business as well. Of course, you mentioned that doing a part-time job to finance this part, that's, that's also valid because these kind of things like outsourcing do cost money. So these are not uh, necessarily uh, cheap, but uh, it can you can save a lot of money with the uh, different tricks and, and opportunities, which I'm very, very happy to share with anyone. So you have to have good trainings, you have to give data, you have to give data on time, you have to manage your freelancers, and then it can be cheaper than just uh, throwing random tasks because that will mean that you will throw money out of the window. Uh, so it doesn't have to be, uh, uh, you don't have to rob a bank for, for affording outsourcing. That's what I want to say. <laughs> he says you don't have to rob a bank. I like you. I like you. It's not going to cost that much that you have to rob a bank. Somewhere in but, between, you know. <laughs> but seriously. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, seriously. I but it doesn't uh, have to only be the the tasks that you don't want to do. One of the mistakes that I believe that we make as entrepreneurs is that we, we stay in that entrepreneur lane. We stay in that one person, solopreneur, mom and pop, you know, shop. When what we should be focusing on is the step, looking at entrepreneurship as a step. Mm -hmm. and, and then you want to expand to be a business owner, to have employees. This is all about creating jobs, not mm -hmm. only for ourselves, for other people. So when you start thinking about creating jobs, what are some of the roles and the tasks that you can create so that you can actually hire employees to expand your business? What did you say? Yes. So stop being the employee of the business actually be the visioner of the business. So see how you can have the big community, how you can create jobs and that's great. And you know, Sharifa, it was a great feeling last time. I started to work with a new freelancer and we had a lot of back and forth, good training. So he jumped into a process, started to working and he sent me a message when he received his first uh, uh, salary. So like the first settlement of his work and he said that it's a completely new uh, area for him to be able to earn his money without being employed and starting his own small business and going out and 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 have have this opportunity to to work and it's a good feeling to me it's it's like i like to think about this as a freedom project giving freedom to those who work with me uh at, in a freelancing basis so who do provide the service uh to me and to our clients so we give them the freedom and we give the freedom for the clients for the business owners as well who can have this ability to be the visionaries of their business and not the employees of their business. Yes. So Jessica, when you began to write, was there an aspect or certain freedom that it gave you? <laughs> do, you do any of you write? Have you written any I'm books? an author, yes. Okay, yes. absolutely. Freedom was not the word that comes to mind. Like writing all night, going to work all day. It was insane. Um, I mean, this book alone is a seven year process. And then mm. finding like, I'm like, I have a certain, there's a certain culture to all of my business. You know, I'm all about like giving back, reaching out. I'm a Christian. So I'm like looking for publishers and publicists who have a heart, you know, who can ride beside me on my mission so that it's not just, you know, dead in the water with people who don't understand. So then there's that whole process. So I mean, the, the, there's, there's two parts of me. I mean, primarily I'm a creative. So I'm, I'm, I, I love modeling. It's my day job and I, I enjoy the process of the beauty and the branding and the marketing that comes after I enjoy all of that. 
and then I love fundamental in the story told. So I love acting. I love film production. I just wrote a pilot. So I love the process of telling a story as it might inspire someone and bring them to a place of healing, right? So that's the core of who I am, but none of those things ever leave the living room if I can't manage business. Um, so then I have to be a business person. And on the one hand, I'm kind of good at it, right? Like I speak succinctly. I'm actually pretty good at um, uh, bookkeeping and I kind of enjoy data entry. So, so I'm not terrible there. But then there's stuff I can't ever like figure out. And I, I'm, I'm, I would say like the only reason that things don't take off faster is because I don't know how to do those business things. And like, so I actually kind of want to like, ask Sophia some questions. <laughs> go like, ahead, go right ahead. Go, so, go right ahead. So Sophia, yeah. so, so I'm gonna be an example for anybody watching. Like if you're where I'm at, run with me on this. So I'm, I previously, like 10 years ago, owned like three businesses and had staff and 20 vendors and everybody ran everything. And then I sold all the businesses, was bought out and went back full throttle into entertainment, which was my purpose. That was kind of the, the story uh, of how things went so now I'm back you know modeling acting writing speaking um have books in the works have a tv show in the works what's happening to me right now is I'm uh funding this part of the business you know through my modeling so I'm like working and my task list each day is about 16 hours worth of work I get up between 4 30 and 6 I'm doing eight hours I'm taking an hour nap I'm doing eight hours and there's not a lot of margin. Like I used to have tons of money when I had the other businesses and I was bought out. And then I had like, I didn't have to work for two years after that. But right now, not a lot of margin. Most of my modeling work was quarantined. So even less margin, like even less cash coming in. So how do I, where do I, how do I choose the first thing with like no budget happening, no extra budget, right? So how do I, Obviously, I shouldn't be doing all 16 hours of work. I should be doing this, what I'm doing right now, right? This is this is where I need to be. So where, where do, like, what's your website and what's the first thing I click on? I, I hear everything you're saying and I want to be like where you want me to be, like where you're suggesting to be. And I, all I'm thinking is like, I don't know where the first step is for me. Can you speak to that in some way? I think what Jessica is saying is you represent a lot of, of, entrepreneurs is because the question you're asking it, and I'm gonna let Sophia answer is like where do I start like I have all these different things but where do I start yeah like what do I outsource first like I obviously need my day to be more like an eight to ten hour day and I obviously need all of these things to be be outsourced and I I don't know what would be the appropriate place to start and especially with unknown freaky budgets happening <laughs> yes not not my fault either so three very quick points coming to my mind first think about your business as a machine which eats something and gives cash to you in the end mm -hmm. uh, what is the actual process that makes the cash generating so what is it in your business that generates the money because that's really the core all the things around it, all the administration, nitty gritty whatsoever, it's just some extra. But what is the core that actually gives you the money, the margin? So this is something you have to focus on. You have to find this very heart of your business because that's what generates you, what, what you want to get out of it. And uh, this is point one. Point two is the Pareto law. Not sure if you are familiar with this law. It's the 80%, 20% law works in a lot of circumstances. It basically says that 20% of your efforts generating 80% of the outcome. So if this is true, that probably the 16 hours you put into it, not generating most of the, the job done. So probably it's just a few hours, maybe not the 20%, but let's say like a four, four hours a day or maybe just the eight hours a day. And we are just talking about them 50%. Uh, but probably these eight hours, let's say, what you put into the job generating like 80% of the actual results you are getting. So probably you are putting so much time. Uh, and let me just turn around this principle. So probably 80% of the job you are putting in your business only generating 20% of the outcomes. 
And if you find that what is this 20%, which is like low and you don't really need it, you actually can let it go, then you save 80% of your time. Very simple example, and maybe it's not actually relevant to your business, just as an example. If you have like 10 clients and you have to work like the most of the hours for two clients who are really demanding and always pushing you and always on the edge of the deadline and they are not doing what they are supposed to do and you have to work extras for them and you are doing like 80% of your work because of these two clients. If you let those two clients go, maybe you lose the revenue of these two clients, but you are freeing up 80% of your time, which you can use for actually more uh, result-oriented or better clients, more quality clients and earn more actually in less time. Does it make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna repeat this back to you. Here's what, here's my takeaway. Find the money, where's the money? <laughs> where's the majority of the money, the income? Um, what of my time is focused on that money and what can I let go of? That is, takes up too much time and doesn't, the money doesn't equal it. So where's the money? What and, yeah, let's say that, okay? So I don't want to look like a marshal not just about money not everything is about money of course but if we want a healthy business then we can we have to talk about money but yeah actually the results of the story so for example when you marketing your book you have to see that uh, you are spending like money on different marketing channels which marketing channel is generating the most actual buying of your book and cut the one which is not generating or generating just very low uh, rate conversion rate cut it out don't spend money don't spend time on it go to the one which is generating by most of it and then it will really really boost the sales that's that's another example of it so you have to see how is it going so i think maybe if i spend some time evaluating where what's coming in and maybe write down like in one week here's how many hours went to what and what and then at the end of it, it's probably going to be pretty obvious like i really don't need to do 10 of those hours that was like a waste of hours so, because yeah, I'm like really good at the creative arts and I actually am really bad at having any idea where the money is coming from. I, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't even answer you. <laughs> There's money, everything's paid. I just, I couldn't even answer you like specifically what comes no from. No stress. Maybe you don't have to answer it now. I think <laughs> if you could give yourself a little time okay. and sleep on it, uh, I am sure in this week I will get an email from you when you figured out that whether <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I know we'll figure it out. And it was actually very interesting because I understood that it, the only difference that I would say and what I do, I do a lot of analysis. I, I, I like analyze my Google Analytics, you know, almost every day, sometimes several times a day. I want to know where my money is coming from, where my traffic is coming from, where my visitors are coming from. I test a lot of different ads out. Um, to, to figure out what works and what doesn't. But one of the things that I was saying is different is that I, always, I don't always let things go just because they're taking up too much time. What I do is I evaluate is the time they're taking up worth the amount that they're paying. And then if, if it's not equal, then I may adjust it or renegotiate it or increase it so that it's equal of that time so that it's not draining on me so that I'm spending a lot of time and making a little bit of money. I try to make sure that I maximize all the time that I actually um, put into it, if that makes sense. That's really, yeah, it absolutely does. Yeah, yeah you don't have, analysis is the best thing you can do with your business and the, your uh, personality type, it, it makes complete sense that you are analyzing a lot and that's great. You can, if you keep a track of this data, I think you can have uh, enormous uh, results out of reading it. Okay, yes. so we're talking, me and you, Sophia. We're gonna talk. <laughs> yes, no, me right. me and you get on your calendar. <laughs> yes, Dana, Dana, you're on mute. Don't forget about me, Sophia. This is fabulous and I, I love how, how, um, how you can yeah you can see what we're saying you 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 get what we're saying and that's that's one of my um, apprehensions around hiring and outsource and even having the conversation is when I get to explaining what I want I don't feel like I'm effective in translating you know what I know to say and you get it and that's that I think is is a big part I'm just really really noticing and recognizing that you make me feel at ease with the idea 
because I'm not sure that I, I'm not sure I explain it properly. So I get what I get and it's probably out of my communication, but I'm hearing that you're a professional and it's more looking for the right professional who can get me. Yes. Yeah. Guys, what you can absolutely do without even thinking about when to outsource and these kind of uh, scary details, do it yeah. today. When you have a task to do, turn on the screen recorder. I'm sure you find a screen recorder online or it's on your uh, desktop also. And start to talk talking about what you are doing and show what you are doing. So a task mm. that is related to your business. Here I click, that's what I do whatsoever and save this recording. Because this recording will be the basis of your standard operating procedures. The more recordings you have, the more standard operating procedures you will have. And then an assistant, someone who is helping you, can create a procedure based on that. So basically a, a Word document as well with the passwords and whatsoever, where to click, what to do. Because just imagine that this is a training. This task can be given away easily. You made the training. One training today, two trainings tomorrow, depending on what you are actually doing. Even if you are not giving it away right now, maybe next time you are doing the tasks, you don't remember what you had to do, how you did it. You can rewatch the recording again and see how was it, where did I click. It helps wow. you. And in the future, it helps the outsourcing as well. Wow, that's awesome. See what I mean? That's Yes, I, I haven't been in this type of conversation. You're on top of, uh, yeah, you, your, your skills are needed. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. What you're doing, Sophia, is that like me and Dana and Sh Sharifa and everyone, a lot of people have these like super passionate, amazing community contributions, you know, working with PTSD, survivors, suicide, all these things. But without you, no one gets reached because you make us so much more effective. We have the time left to actually do this community work. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Now I'm so glad to have these uh, amazing uh, goals and visions you guys have because you are making the world better and I'm just happy to help you to achieve it. No, but that's what we need help with because I believe that most entrepreneurs and small business owners suffer due to lack of training. You know, some of the companies that I work for were larger companies. American Express, my first job out of high school, TWA, Transwear Airlines. We spent months in training before we actually became an employee. And then before becoming an employee, we became on the job training where we were supervised while doing our job before just thrown out as an employees. But what we do as small business owners, when we get to that point of hiring, we just hire some, Dana, you're my new assistant, get to work, that's your job, that's your email, that's your desk, sit there and do something. If you don't mess it up, if you don't burn it down, then you get to come back tomorrow. But there really isn't any training. I might say, Dana, this is how I want you to answer the phone, answer the phone, thank you for calling, ask, ask Sharifa, whatever my company is, you know, this is Dana, how may I help you? But an actual, you know, weeks long training or a couple of months of training to make sure that Dana is aware and she knows how to do her job. It's not something that we often do. Yeah, it's true. Now, we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And what I love to do at the end of every show is just simply allow my guests the opportunity to speak directly to the audience, to everyone who is watching this show live, as well as everyone who is watching in the archives and let them know what you want them to take away from your appearance here today. And we're gonna start with you, Zofia. Oh, with me? <laughs> I didn't have time to think it through. Uh, I loved the stories both of you were sharing. These, these are things that are so important and so much needed to heal from our traumas, to take care of ourselves, to love ourselves, because that's how we, how we can be the best entrepreneur, the best wife, the best mother, the best friend, the best children. Uh, that's what we need to do to, to love, love ourselves first and then go and share the love and, and help those who assist those who need support in the community. So thank you so much. And just a side hint, you basically give me an idea about uh, where to find my niche, which is one of my big struggles. So uh, I definitely want to continue conversation with you, Jessica and Dana. So I will send you my booking link that we can, we can have a, a nice chat about your business specifically. And if anyone else uh, wants to jump on a call like that, then I am really, really uh, happy to do so. I have a booking link. I can give it to you, Sharifa. Maybe you can share and I have some limited spots where people can jump in and, and talk to me. 
Thank you. Uh, you are so welcome. Absolutely. What I would recommend is dropping your booking link into the comments because you have several people, James Stewart, so many other people who tuned in and who are watching the show. And I'm pretty sure they'd like to book some time with you. Dana, what do you have for us? Number one, I want to thank you for giving me the time and your ears and your hearts to listen to my message and what's important to me. And I also want right now for people to consider, like Sophia was saying, that we are traumatized. We are going through trauma presently. And we wear a smile because we've learned to put on the mask. And we don't bother people because we've learned that you can be a burden by sharing your emotions. And so I do have some ask and I'll drop some comments in below, but my request right now, while I have a couple of moments is to ask the audience to take time to look, really look at how you feel every day and adjust segment by segment. If you go from talking to your daughter to the grocery store, recenter and realize that each and every moment, because we're so triggered, we can fall into negative thinking or feeling bad and let your good feeling be your guide of how you're doing. Not your paycheck right now, not right now. Not how pretty your house is, not right now. Not your credit score, it's not about that right now. Right now is about doing everything you can to feel good as much as possible every segment of the day and to love yourself the best you know how. That's my request for today. Oh, that was so powerful. Thank you. Oh my God. I love me some Dana. We're gonna talk soon. We have <laughs> yes. so much to talk about. Yes, yes. it's time. Yes. yes. Jessica, what do you have for us? Okay, I have an action step for you guys. First of all, if you uh have had loss or trauma and you wanna get back on for purpose, square it up, get back to your calling, go to from pain to purpose .org and order the book. It's just twelve dollars. You can order it anywhere, Amazon, Bonds and Noble. And then the second part uh, of what I wanna encourage you to do is even if you don't care about any of that, I want you to order the book. 100% of the proceeds of this book go to the benefit of human trafficking survivors. I am receiving no profits from this. 100% goes into a fund which benefits survivors. So just buy it. Oh, <laughs> org. From pain to purpose.org. Definitely want to support you. The link is in the Facebook post. What you're doing is amazing. I've never seen anyone give 100% of their profits away. You are amazing. You are a blessing. Thank you for stepping in and being the voice for people who are voiceless. So we definitely appreciate you. I want to thank you all for being a guest on today's episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. And I especially want to thank everyone who tuned in to watch the show live, as well as everyone who is watching in the archives. I definitely appreciate your support. I appreciate you for sharing the show, for watching the show, but please support our guests. They're giving of themselves, their time, their energy, their efforts, their resources. Support them. Their websites are in the Facebook post. Follow them on social media. Send them a message. Send them a tweet. Send them an inbox. And when you reach out to them, please let them know Sharifa Hardy says hi. Now, if you're interested in more ways that I can help your business, or maybe you want to be a guest on the Roundtable Talk Show, please visit my website website at asharifa.com. Until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, everyone have a safe and a blessed Happy New Year. Bye now. Bye.